Hey, what's up everybody? This is Tony Mosey and I wanna to talk to you about the solutions engineering role, also known as the sales engineering role. And this is for anyone who is in either sales, psychology, studied psychology, worked in psychology, or just recently got out of a software engineering boot camp. So it's for people who are making this consideration. I wanna give you some points, some experiences, some thoughts, so that you could uncover where it is that you may want to go and see if this sales or solutions engineer is the right role for you. So I'm going to give you the perspective of a, an associate sales engineer uh, because uh, this is mainly an entry level position. And let me just give you a little background too as to why I chose to make this video. Um, so what my background is, how I got into this role, I it's a series of um, events previously in my life, uh, as well as what happened in recent times that allowed me to get my first job as an associate sales engineer. So uh, things that were not uh, related yet unrelated were uh, at nine years old, just to give you a little background on me, um, I went door-to-door -door sales. I was selling newspapers uh, for Yonkers, New York, called the Herald Statesman. So at a young age of nine, I was able to just knock on people's doors and tell people why, pitch to them why the Herald Statesman was such a good newspaper. So that's where I learned my all idea of going up to customers and pitching and listening to them and getting rejected and all this wonderful stuff. Uh, then I worked in psychology, so I got my bachelor's and my master's degree in psychology. Um, so I worked three years in research and 10 years in uh, direct patient care. I was also an in-home therapist. Um, and then I, I slowly started getting out of psychology. I worked self-employed as a freelance digital marketer. Uh, I worked for self-published authors. I was digitally marketing their books, doing hip hop music video summarizing their books. And as I was getting out of there, I went to General Assembly's Full Stack, at the time it was called Full Stack Web Development Immersive Program. It is now rebranded and now considered Software Engineering Immersive. So if you wanna check out General Assembly, I will put the link to the description below. And then six months um, out after graduating from General Assembly, I got a job at a 500 plus staffed company worldwide. It's an enterprise software company. Uh, and there I was an associate sales engineer or solutions engineer. Uh, we'll talk a little bit, a little bit about the difference and the makeup on various companies. Uh, I sold software as a service. Um, I sold testing tools. I sold API specification uh, 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 write-ups. Um, I sell, sold automated, you know, functional automated uh, load and performance testing tools and virtualization tools. So I did a, a whole uh, series of things as an associate. I got to learn from a company, learn to talk, learn the jargon, be on some demos, talk to some, uh, you know, various personas, technical and non-technical, and then, you know, um, demo and present to them uh, these products that I had, uh, that, that my company had. Um, so I never knew I was going, I was, uh, what a sales engineer was until I got my first job out of software bootcamp. Um, you know, most people who are both in and out of the tech world have no clue what a sales engineer is. So I figured I would talk about the sales engineer from a high level overview and looking at the sales uh, at the associate role, as this video is intended for people attending or graduating from a software boot camp, or those who are in sales or were in sales, want to be in sales and would like to consider a more sales but technically focused role. Um, so, what is a sales engineer? A sales engineer is a mixture between a salesperson and a software engineer. A salesperson has great emotional IQ. Right, they they understand people. You know, a really good salesperson understands people. I mean, that's like the expert salesperson, right? So, nevertheless, the symptom or at least the characteristic of a salesperson is having that emotional into uh, ability, that ability to understand what customers mean, 
verbally, non-verbally, paraverbally, you name it. Um, and while a software engineer, uh, on the other end, a software engineer puts their responsibilities more on building software and the software functionality. Combining together the emotional EQ, the emotional intelligence to understanding people while also understanding software and its fun functionality makes a sales engineer. Now, the name sales engineer can uh, sometimes be very interchangeable depending on the company. The name sales engineer can also mean solutions engineer or client solutions engineer or technical solutions engineer. And there are many other uh, uh, names that are synonymous with that. And the job function of them could vary in frequency and intensity based on tech savviness, business acumen, and presentation, demo, public speaking skills. Those three. The sales engineer, solutions engineer, roles are typically in pre-sales. So, which means uh, pre-sales, you are reaching out to prospects who have never tried or bought your company's product before. You are working with cold prospects, which means prospective customers who have no clue about your product. Uh, it is once they have purchased your, purchased at your product, uh, purchased your product, uh, that they would go into the post-sales role where a different engineer or specialist would work with that. But the pre-sales role uh, is working with customers who have not bought the product that you would be speaking about. So having business acumen, what does that mean? Understand means understanding your company's product, the problems that your customer is having, and finding a solution or solutions that your company has um, or have that matches fixing that company's problems. Business acumen is understanding the company's business, what are they trying to solve, who they tr are trying to serve, and how your solution will be perfect for allowing them to save money, time, stress, work smarter, faster, scale, and other great things. Some things to consider. First, you have to be comfortable with public speaking. Whether it's in front of your account executive, which is a salesperson, um, you know, those are the people who work on only in a larger company. So they can work at smaller companies too. But like, you know, uh, uh, colloquially, colloquially, we or at least traditionally, we've known the salesperson to be a salesperson, a salesman, a saleswoman, salesperson. But um, another word for them is account executives, account managers, and maybe we get into that into another video. But whether you're speaking in front of your colleague, you know, uh, or in front of five to 10 prospects, you know, on a call, sometimes you're, you're getting a team of people who really want to know, like, what is this product about? Um, and it's your time to shine and it's your time to make that impression. So, um, you have to be comfortable with not only speaking and answering their questions. Uh, secondly, do you want to be technically savvy? In the case of the account executive versus the sales engineer, these prospects are looking for the sales engineer, the solutions engineer, credibility in solving their business problems. A foundation in understanding software engineering concepts is good, but it's also good to get your hands familiar into a few different information technology and coding practices from a high level business overview. Thirdly, depending on the company, you may find yourself doing a lot of coding to a little coding, to a lot of business acumen and demonstration, to a little business acumen and demonstration. Your job is to fuse both the customer facing capability where you are able to speak effectively with other humans, solve their problems, and come up with your company's existing solutions to solve uh, that for them. But each company you work for has their own culture of how they want their SEs to work. So understanding your strengths is a must. Um, so I have some mentors of mine, you know, uh, in my sales engineer community. I'll share the link to the uh, uh, in the description below about the communities that I'm in. So if you want to definitely immerse yourself by attending one of these, uh, 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 you know, communities, it'd be great because then you can pick the minds of people who have been in the field for years, uh, from the associates all the way up to vice presidents of global sales of global. Uh, 
pre-sales engineers or our sales engineers. So you get to hear and rub elbows with these people. But I've been getting mentored in my community. And uh, the one last talk I had with a guy, um, he now is a uh, senior director now at a, a startup company that just got backed up in funding, got backed with funding. I think it's Series C funding. Um, he said, um, this is some information I want to give you guys who are watching and listening. The first is, out of the SE title, the sales engineering title, you need to know whether you are a big S and a small E or a little S and a big E. So little salesperson and big engineer or big salesperson and little engineer. So meaning, do you find yourself more the salesperson and less of the engineer? Are you, or are you less of a salesperson and more of the engineer? I mean, are you a person who can effectively and easily troubleshoot software issues? Because that would be the engineer. Or would you be able to explain high level concept, concepts of the things? If you know the answer, that can help guide you into the companies you may want to work for. As some companies are more sales eccentric and other companies are more engineering eccentric. Another piece of knowledge I was given from my mentors was, since the sales or solutions engineer is the most popular term out of these customer facing software roles, you may find yourself wanting to get into exploring whether it's the sales solutions engineer you want to be or something else in pre-sales. Would you want to be an account executive working at a software company or do you want to be a sales engineer? How about a technical account manager versus sales engineer? which is more of a project management role. Would you rather be in more in the sales role talking about selling of the product uh, or more building, debugging, running tests? And again, depending on the company, that can vary by extremity or frequency of these job functions. So find your niche, find what you're comfortable with, find your strengths in that. Then you can make that decision of where do you wanna be as an SE? So here's some myths, right? I found about a couple. So there are myths about being a sales engineer. And one of them is that you need to have graduated uh, with a computer science degree or from a software engineer boot bootcamp. Okay, look, I know in this video, I'm kind of embodying the idea. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology, a master's degree in psychology. So first off, let's just say, I don't have a, a bachelor's or a master's degree in computer science. I never went to formal school for computer science. I did psychology. Uh, and then also I need to debunk this myth about boot camps. There are some sales engineers, especially those who got associate sales engineers roles, and they never went to a software boot camp. Some of these people, yes, they had uh, bachelors in English or communications or journalism, but they never had a bachelors in computer, com computer science nor have they gone to a or attended a, a software boot camp. So some people just came straight out of, you know, school, college with just non no, irrelevant degrees. Um, and though it's great to have knowledge in these areas, you know, you know, uh, to have a computer science, a comp sci degree or some boot camp certification. There have been many people who have been given sales engineer positions just because they possess the qualities of a charismatic public speaker who is open-minded to various technology stacks and concepts and can take it all packaged in a beautiful box to be able to present it to people in a clear and understandable way. I've seen those who graduated with English degrees, communication degrees, journalism, finance, psychology, and other not so uh, necessarily technical education backgrounds, and they were able to gain employment as a sales engineer. Okay? So another myth is that you need a lot of degrees and certificates. So you know, you heard me say that before about the degrees and certificates and what I have and what some people have. But guess what? For certain companies, that could be a myth. I know of a team lead, which by the way, if you know the rank structure, there's associate, then there's the regular level, then there's the senior, then there's a lead, and then there, and then, uh, and then perhaps there could be senior lead, and then it goes into manager, and then, you know, and then there's uh, a senior manager, and then director, and senior director, and vice president, so it keeps going all the way up, but nevertheless, when you have associate, a regular sales engineer, or, you know, just the 
standard sales engineer, and then senior sales engineer. Then there's team lead. The team lead is above a, C a senior, can be a above a senior, and be right below a manager. So they're right in the middle. They're like junior managers. And this person is working at a Fortune 500 company, you know, bad, a stock, you know, star, uh, 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 in the stock market as well. Uh, and he has an associate's degree. This guy has an associate's degree. Very interesting. So debunking that myth. So last thoughts here. So I don't want to sound like a contradiction, but as we speak, things are changing. All right. It's 2021. We're moving into 2021 20, uh, and beyond. Uh, things are going to change. What I have heard, you know, I know of people who were able to get jobs up to this point, up to 2021, with little to no formal education. But since the market is getting competitive, it would be wise to at least study some stuff, whether it's free or you pay for it. Nevertheless, try to get as much information as you can. There are a few things in my queue of learning. That is Salesforce, uh, they have a free track, you know, a solutions engineering path for their Trailhead Blazor platform. Uh, also, CompTIA has some great certifications. Uh, CompTIA is a globally accredited IT learning and testing platform that's gotten people their first step into an entry level job in IT and software. And the one that you can start on is CompTIA's Security Plus which is an entry-level type of certificate, uh, uh, that certification that starts you in the IT world. So it's letting you understand security concepts, which is very important. Everyone needs to be have those kind of best practices when it comes to putting together software, when it comes to, get, to working with software, when it comes to trying to help customers with software and so forth. Um, some companies employ sales engineers who have this on their resume. And it would not hurt to go to freecodecamp.org and learn a brush up on HTML, CSS, and or JavaScript. Okay? So it's good to have that. The best thing I learned from every interview, no matter if I get a rejection, was that either hint, either uh, they will hint during these, these um, interviews or deliberately tell you what you need to learn before, during, and after the interview. I want to thank those interviews as it allowed me to evolve from a person who had no prior technical experience to a person who could have conversations with software engineers in middle and upper, upper management. So I hope this video was of great help to you. If you thought this was cool, please click the thumbs up. And if you have any questions or information, please leave it in the comments below. Thank you and talk to you soon.